in London and also now Birmingham. So we're going to talk about Industry Link and its connectivity um, to students. Um, Industry Link is dedicated to supporting the professional development of students at ACM, helping them make their first steps into the music industry as it exists today. Industry Link connects students to a network of top-tier industry partners in the music and wider creative industries, and also offers regular career development tutorial and masterclass opportunities with visiting guests. Headed by Martin Ace Kemp from multi-award winning uh, band Skunk and Nancy, um, Industry Link is made of a team of resident industry experts who support education delivery and student experience at ACM, who also provide real opportunities to turn a passion into a sustainable career via the industry contacts they have built up over a lifetime. Ace is a living embodiment of the music business we know today, with his own successful record label, sales of over six million records, and approaching 25 years anniversary of Skunk and Nancy. Over the years, Ace has headed or headlined the Glastonbury Festival, played for Nelson Mandela and the Dalai Lama, and simultaneously selling out world tours. So I'd like to introduce you to Ace to talk more about Industry Link. Thank you very much. Awesome. I talk really loud, probably because I'm half deaf as well. Um, uh, Delon, I'm with, I'm with Delon earlier because I don't normally get up and do these um, speeches, so I will be citing things from here, and uh, I'm taking the clicker as the top one, yes, okay. All right, and so basically Industry Link, it, I'm going to tell you basically what we do, how we do it, and, and why we do it, okay. Um, it, it's, it's been proven to be very successful, I think it's, it's doing what people want. Um, basically, um, let's have a look, let's have a look, so if I press this, am I the right one? Press the side one. Oh, the side one. There you go. There you go. That's how, how I am. Um, so what we did is we set it up. This, it, 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 a few years ago, I had a chance meeting where I went into Metropolis Studios about a job. I met some people. There was an ACM uh, people there. And, and it just so happened that I knew this organization from a long time. I'd just taken a couple of years out from the band, and I just finished like an MA at Middlesex University based in music education. I'd been setting up some schools myself. It was a long story. But they said to me, come in and help us with this thing called Industry Link, okay? And so this is, this is why we set it up. We, we wanted to enable the students uh, to start forming their own sustainability within the industry as soon as they started their education, from the day they came in. So they could explore and they could formulate portfolio careers while they still have the resources around them, you know, the students, the networking, um, everything they have within the organization that we provide. Um, it's, it's like an outreach into the real life music industry while studying. So you can dip your toe in the water, okay? So if I look at the slide now, um, this is the kind of thing we do, okay? So we have gigs and festivals, um, master classes, workshop events, and we've also got a hub for students with work placement, sync and licensing opportunities, um, and industry auditions. We also have one-to-one -one tutorials as well to kind of mentor them through their journey, okay? So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. It's a lot easier to show you our examples. So what we do is we put on 150 events per term across the four colleges. Um, and what we, what we have is we have festivals and we have gigs and we have master classes, okay? Um, I'll start off with, there's a couple here. Here's Chad Smith from Red Hot Chili Peppers. He came into the master class. Not only did he play the drums and was very entertaining, our production students recorded him at the same time in the studio next door to the room. Then he went upstairs and he talked to the business students and about his career in, um, you know, in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So we involve people from all of the disciplines in everything we do in Industry Link. It basically starts from anybody. So you could be the first person of a, a diploma right up to the last day of a degree and beyond into alumni, and you could say, I'm a business student, I'd like to play a gig. And we'll say, yes, we'll help you with that. You could say, I'm a performance student, and I want to go work backstage at a festival lugging a Marshall amp around. And you could say, we can help you with that. So anybody can have a go. Because it's co-curricular, they can all dip their toe. Some people find themselves changing paths of, or integrating paths within their studies as well of what they really, where they intended to start off, they end in a different place. OK. So there's, there's Lucy Pr Sprague, and there's the other end of the spectrum. We've got Chad Smith, Red Hot Chili Peppers, right up to Lucy Sprague, who was one of the uh, kind of, I think she was the runner-up runner up of the X Factor a few years ago. So if I go across here, some of the workshops that we deal with, um, extracurricular, co-curricular as we call them now, 
DJ workshops. Anybody can learn to be a DJ because we know there's a good business in DJing. Production students can do it to play their music. Performance students can do it to get into clubs to make money on the weekends. Business students can do it for fun as well. They can make money on the weekends. So we have music industry boot camp. Anybody can attend that. If you want to form your record label, you could come and attend that music industry boot camp. Okay. So I'll press that. There we go. Um, here's, another ex here's another example of it as well. So if we look at like um, Q&As and PR workshops, these things as well, these are like a guest lecture type uh, in our program of things where people may be studying at the time and we'll say, well, I think it's about this time in their course, they're learning about these PR aspects, we're bringing industry professionals and we'll put them in. You know, it could be someone like Emma Bartholomew there who owns her own agency. It could be the actual technical people from Audient, which are a desk maker, and the production students come in and they ask them questions that no other people would particularly want to hear or talk about, but they would love to. So we'll put them into their lectures as guest lectures, okay? Okay. So, I'm going to bring up Victoria here. She's going to tell us a little bit about how we deal with students, what they say, and how we communicate with them. Just as a heads up, the slides are also on the screen in front of you. So ah, okay. Okay, lovely, thank you. <laughs> So what do students say? So 96% of alumni, ATM alumni, are working in the creative industries six months after graduating. 70% are working actually in the music industry, and that's from our Delhi survey. Um, what's great about Industry Link is that it actually measures student attendance against capacity for all of its events, and this is a way to garner immediate feedback on the popularity of, of events. We, we hold regular um, student views on Industry Link um, within our board and committee structure. Um, we have the Student um, Engagement and, and Experience Committee, and um, student reps sit in that committee, and um, ACE would bring an Industry Link report to that committee as well. We also have regular student focus groups with um, students FE and HE, because we also deliver further education as well as higher education, and obviously further education is a feeder route into the higher education as well. So we want to make sure that we're engaging our audience and um, we're giving students what they need. So what do students say, actually, about um, ACM? So here are some quotes. I'm not going to read them verbatim for you, but, you know, just to pick out some key things. You know, they really want to network, and, and IndustryLink gives them that opportunity. The fact that we run a two-year accelerated degree um, means that students can actually finish their degree quicker and get a head start in the music industry because it is very much a young um, industry. And also um, about the fact that cross-collaboration. So my advice to you would be, you know, run a module which is cross-collaboration across the subject disciplines, um, and then, you know, students can work together. Um, one example of that would be the business students would do the EPK, um, you know, electronic press kit for um, the performers um, students. We also um, run MEDEM. We take the students to MEDEM, which happens um, in June every year. So we take the music business and innovation students to that. It's an international music industry conference which takes place in lovely Cannes. Um, their, uh, students are able to network with thousands of music and creative industry professionals in attendance, as well as debate the latest industry happenings at various conference labs <coughs> and presentations hosted by some of the biggest names in the music business. So I'm going to hand you back to um, Ace Thank to talk more much. about go. the different music industry activities. There we go. Okay, so uh, we talked about why we do it. And uh, we talked about what we do. We're going to talk about how we do it now, OK? So we have lots of different things. We have lots of live events, right? We, have, um, we, we do this through uh, networking connections, industry partnerships. I'll talk about Metropolis Studios in a minute with our, our um, association with them. Um, we have dual professional tutors. So they're working in the music business all of the time, as well as teaching. So they bring that connection in as well. Um, we have tutorials for students. So they can book in and have a tutorial with anything they want to talk about. It could be career progression. It could be literally the next day at a gig, how they're going to prepare for it, or how to even form a record label. OK? Um, we have student teams that we use. There's learning by doing. So we'll have a tour production team that goes out and puts on the events or helps with the events internally and externally as well. Um, uh, we, we also have an inter-campus swap. That's the amazing thing about it. Music is not contained in one town. So between Birmingham, London, and Guildford, students are going up and playing gigs in all of the different areas, OK? Um, and we have lots of placements as well, which are really amazing for people, which a lot of them learn, uh, then go on to jobs as well. So let's have a look at some pictures. OK, so 
If I'm looking here, uh, here's a couple of examples. Um, a couple of London kind of shows. We have sunset sessions with high road sessions. They're in different venues. We have five different venues in London that put on a gig every month. Professional venues. It's a proper real life gig. It's not a student one in the back of the, of the college at the end of the day. These are proper venues. Students uh, book in for these. We look at links. We make sure they're good. We gui give them guidance and they do these kind of gigs across town. So this happens across all of the campuses, okay? Um, here's a great example. This is like a noise theory gig. Noise theory is our noisy gig. That's where they were full bands and they rock out and they do that type of thing. The sun, sunset sessions will be a broken down acoustic gig. There's also solo artist gigs as well and electronic gigs. So we cater for everybody within them. Okay. Um, festivals. Everybody loves a festival. Everybody wants a festival, in fact, right? And I can understand why, because it is the holiday of rock and rollers, okay? So what we do is we, we work with about 17 different festivals uh, in different degrees. So last, well, this year, isn't it, alone, we had 150 students across festivals. That wasn't just playing on the main stage um, or performing. That was everything from DJing in tents, as you can see. There's a DJ one there on Always the Sun. Um, right up to these huge festivals like with the madness and things like that. They could be working behind the scenes, uh, doing the social networking, the technical crew, setting up the stages, shadowing sound, performing live, DJing. Every aspect of that festival we will have students working on. So that's, that's a, a really great one as well. And you can see we also do local stuff as well. So it's not just all the big high profile stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a, a one in Guildford, for instance, there's always the sun, so we would have DJs in there, we'd have technical support, we'd have bands playing, and then we'd have uh, takeover stages as well. So we'll be in, in collaboration with festivals, and maybe we may finance or sponsor certain parts of it, and then we'll have a takeover stage within them. So those are all going on all the time. Okay. Um, how do we support student events? Well, there's loads of ways we, we do it, apart from obviously mentoring and then booking them in. Um, we help them promote and we promote internally and externally. Um, we help with backline equipment. We have a great facilities team. So we understand that some students can't get a drum kit and an amp into a festival, whereas we could build a stage around them as well. Um, we have stage crews as well as our own internal students that we take out as well to help them. Um, online playlists with within the uh, four different campuses playing in the receptions and on, on the web as well, which we're facing. Um, we have rehearsal facilities, so if they need to rehearse for that gig, they don't have to worry about paying for it, they can just book in. In fact, all of our rooms in all of the ACMs can be booked after hours by any of the students to rehearse. Every room has a back line in it. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, we also help with marketing. So if there's something special going on, our marketing team will uh, record it, video it, put it out there as well. So that's, that's another thing we do, okay? So here's a couple of examples here also of student things. So students um, being in the business, everybody's self-releasing now, and we encourage that self-development. So what we do is we have single releases, like someone would have done in the past and cost them a lot of money. We actually book those shows into our venues on our nights and help the, the students promote them, okay? Um, we also have parties, student parties, and we help to uh, facilitate some of these things. Like we can see the EMA London night in Stain Street, which was really fun. We put some food in, we let the students run it, we book the venue for them, but then it was led by them that night as well, okay? Let's have a look. Oh, let's explore Metropolis. So we work closely with Metropolis Studios. Um, it's part of the ACM group. We put on master classes in there by huge names, in fact, because it's a really big draw. It's a, it's a world-renowned studio. It's a 60% of all of the chart mastering in the world. Um, if you walk in there, you will see Rihanna, Led Zeppelin, those kind of people hanging out in there. It's a proper working studio. Um, we let students have downtime, so on the weekends when they're uh, empty, we'll let the students go in and be recorded by the top engineers who've done an Adele album, things like that, for free for the downtime as well. Um, we have songwriting competitions in there, joint events with them as well. Um, we have experience days, which are really great, where everyone can come and experience, have a tour around the studio, meet the engineers. Um, we also have courses running in there as well. I've got degree courses running in there. So the Metropolis uh, partnership is really, really amazing because it is the real world music business. It brings our production students in, it brings our performance students in, and our business students can work within its confines as well. So it's an amazing thing to do, and we deal with them every day in a different way. Okay, networking. Everybody's talking about music business, there's a lot of networking going on. So what we do is we have networking hubs. 
And this is a great way for students of all programs to meet up. So we do these in the separate campuses, but people come from each other, other's campuses as well. There's great opportunities for collaboration. You will find most ACM artists are on each other, but about five other uh, joint ventures with somebody else, which is, increases their chance of success as well. Um, the alumni are inv invited as well. We have tutor advice in these networking um, uh, situations as well. And we have a thing called Music Gateway Private Network. Music Gateway is this uh, huge global platform where anyone can pitch their, their music and people can go in and pitch on these, uh, these jobs and get paid for it. So we know that that's a big draw for the music industry. We have a private network on it just for ACM um, across all the campuses and the alumni. They form bands. We put auditions on their job opportunities, everything we have. So that works really well for us. There's 2,500 people on there at the moment. So if we have a look, here's a couple of examples of things. Network Monthly, Tar Yard. I went to the one this week. If you've not heard of Tar Yard, it's like the place to be at the moment in the music industry. They have a, a networking night, usually draws around 500, 600 people from the whole of the music industry. Um, we've got a sponsorship in there. We put on five bands there this week. We've done this a couple of times, and all our students are encouraged to go down there as well to meet people. We have students who are actually working in that, that environment as well. We also have alumni networking night, which you can see the blue poster there where we would invite a guest speaker from the industry, but we'd invite the, the alumni plus the current students to meet and talk about ventures. They can talk about where they're going to go to, but also it's a great network to bring people into the, the paid jobs that the alumni are doing as well. So that happens as well. We hold those in great places, like Metropolis Studios at night as well. Okay, so how is this plugged into the curriculum? Okay, it's not as easy as it sounds, but we do our best, okay. so. Industry link. We have A&Ring in the classroom and at events. So we have people, bands, students, members of industry link at all these events that are going on that are all saying about what's going on, what they need, what they want, who's good, who should be going in different places, and also applying straight to us as well. Um, tutorials are not just limiting to assessment, but also personal and professional development. So the tutorials can be something of what they're studying towards at the moment as well. Um, master classes and guest lectures, we try to pull the relevant people, like I was saying, like the audience Q&A, for instance, into a guest lecture. So it's what they're studying at the time. So if we find out, for instance, they're studying film to sound, for instance, about two weeks ago we had a Metropolis Experience Day where the Birmingham students came down and they had two master classes in Metropolis, film to sound. So we'll link the master class into there as well and we'll link the guest lectures into where we find relevant as well. Um, and there's also another part as well, which is practical assessment undertaken at industry link events. Let's have a look at this. Here's a, a great example. Summer Live, here, four days. I think there is, well, look, it's 60 plus artists. So the bands will be part of their assessment. They'll be doing auditions. They'll be headed up by our development teams and the tutors. And then they will do this final showcase. It's like in the electric theater and everyone's invited to it. It's, it's an absolutely amazing event. And the technical students will actually run, you know, the fire and the smoke and all the sound systems as well. So there's something that's linked into assessment, which is actually industry link as well, focused, okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm getting near the end now, so I'm going to talk about alumni. Uh, alumni, we, we manage an alumni database, as you know, because I said we have alumni events, so we invite them to that. But we also, um, we work with alumni, because we say that once you leave ACM, you haven't really left because you're still part of the music business, and we are part of the music business. So alumni are still welcome to play shows. They can come to any of our events. They can come to a master class. They can have tutorials as well. So we, we, we work with alumni because we understand that as soon as you leave, you still need to work with these people to move them on in the future. Not everything happens the next day. So we've got a good success there working with them. We also um, have online case studies, stories, alumni news and stuff on our web as well. So we will support them as well. And as I said, networking events as well. You can see Zach there. Zach is uh, a prize student. He just came and did the most amazing, most amazing maths class on AI, artificial intelligence, last week, which turned my whole world around. And he only graduated last Two weeks ago, was it? Yeah, OK. So, so with some alumni, we have straight back in. But we have a lot of alumni in famous bands as well, in uh, you know, the people like Mumford and & Sons and um, Rudimental, people like that. And they'll come back and they'll talk to the students and teach the uh, students as well. 
And that brings me to the end of my part. But um, if you'd like to ask us any questions, I'm sure Victoria will tell you the answers. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Fantastic. Excellent. So do come and join me over at the microphones. It's br do bring the clicker, yes, if you could, that'd be really thinking. good. Yeah, get stranded over there. And <laughs> I learned how to use this today. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm sure there's lots of questions. Does anyone want to kick us off? <coughs> Rob again. Fantastic. Hefke's getting lots of learning in here before your transition to the <laughs> MFS. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, that was a really interesting presentation about uh, quite a you know, important aspect of your student offer. I'm conscious, it, it took you about 20 to 25 minutes to go through all of that with us. And that's something I think, you know, you were, you were telling us about things that are often quite unique to your institution. How do you go about getting across that message to students and more specifically prospective students um, about the sort of offer that you have in your institution compared to say, if they went and did a music, music tech course at a traditional university setting? There's a, well, I can actually tell you this. There's a, there's a couple of different ways. If you're talking outward facing, we have a lot of open days. And at the open days, we are present. The tutors are present. Everyone's a representative there, and I'm present as well. So there's a, there's a verbal message. We also have some literature that goes with it, obviously. Okay. Um, there's also an amazing thing. Well, I think in a musical community, there's a word of mouth that, that it's like nothing else, is there? It's like when people discover bands, all of a sudden everyone knows about it. So within the students, what we do is we define a nutshell list, okay? So we might say gigs, masterclasses, events, festivals, and you know, business, business supplies. This is what we do. We've got a drop-in office, so people can drop in any time and ask a quick question. And then within those, we will have people with specialisms. So our kind of network beyond the simple nutshell list is actually, okay, there's a certain amount of people with specialisms which will then be assigned or these students will be guided to seamlessly. So they just kind of go, I want to know about a gig. And then we go, well, this is the person, and we set them up with them. So the word of mouth is really good. But also we have an uh, uh, advertising system within the, the college. So we have music gateway for the opportunity stuff. But we have... Um, there's two really good things, actually. One of them is your mail out with all the posters. So, so all the posters you've seen, we, we put a poster out, people go, oh, that's happening, and they can sign up on a, a, on a thing called My ACM, which all students have, all right? But we also have this genius thing called the Electric Sessions and the Bedford Sessions, which is like a Letterman show. And when, when they, it's part of every two weeks, it's a lesson. And when they come in, what we do is we have a, a DJ, so these are all it's student powered. Um, it's like in a venue, but it's set up like a live Letterman show. It runs an hour. So a DJ welcomes them in. Then we have a really killer house band that we put up, put together through students and auditions. Then we'll have business news. We'll have industry link news, which gives them all of the latest um, things happening. Then we'll have a, a guest uh, speaker, like a special guest about some. It could be anybody talking from a startup company to a, an, a, a musician. Then we'll have an acoustic artist, and, and then we'll have a production corner film, and then it will end with a performance, a full performance from another ACM band. So what we do is we encase everything that we do in this one fun kind of example show that people take that away from. So they go, oh, yeah, I get it. I see that. I could be part of this. We know where to go now. And if they do read their emails, they'll... They'll get the second But um, ACE is really right in the sense that we use technology really well at ACM. Um, in terms of my ACM, which is like a mobile app, um, students, you know, get that immediate um, information about the latest gigs that are going on and, you know, latest industry. So um, I think that works really well and at ACM. Just, yeah, I'd like to add as well what's, what um, Victoria was saying about students. We're always asking the students what they want. And one of the main key questions is, how do we communicate to you what we're doing? So we've had a recent student forum on that as well. It's like, are we sending out too many emails? Are we not sending enough? Are you reading the posters? How would you like us to present our list of services? Is it too complex? Is it not enough? So we're continually doing that feedback loop with students because we understand it is a service as well as an offer. And also prospective students can actually attend masterclasses. And we also do an um, ACM and audition process, um, we know, which is assessed, you know, clear criteria from, um, from tutors, which we can then put students into the correct um, pathway. Excellent. Perfect. Other questions? Yep, we've got one in there. Ruth, do you want to come forward and grab this? I can only see sort of a hand, so I'm not sure who's asking. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi. Um, I'm quite interested in employability. Um, at my college, we uh, don't train people for traditional career outcomes, and employability is one of the things that obviously we're looking at with data and how we'll explain how different we are. I think um, the music industry is well known for being quite tough. <laughs> and I see you help your alumni, but I just wondered how you define success and how you support students who may not make it, or how you um, help them understand their place within the industry. You know, yeah, they're well, not I all going to be famous. <laughs> Well, I think the thing is we don't really kind of promote the you're going to be Ed Sheeran card. Um, we, what, we, what we say is it's employability, it's sustainable, sustainability within the creative, creative arts and music business. So we're encouraging uh, students from the start to get involved in things like industry links so they can understand there are it's a portfolio career in there. They could be a session player, they could be a guitarist in a band, they could be working in the studio, they could be working for a social media for a company or on a label. They could be doing them all at the same time if they're lucky. So we promote self-development and discovery through all of these things that we say you can dip your toe in the water. You might go and do an event and hate it but you might come away with another perspective. I could add that to what I'm doing. So we all know that music business changes every two years it's constantly changing and so we have to develop a portfolio career even myself I have a portfolio career to keep up with the changes and keep developing so we will encourage that we will also encourage their strong goal obviously as their number one focal point but around it we all know that everybody has different aspects and um, skills that they can use to, to be involved in the industry. I think that also comes down to the different programme models that we run as well. So we also run a foundation year, so if they're not quite ready for the two-year accelerated degree, uh, they can do a foundation year before that. And we also have um, uh, our own uh, radio station called Eagle Free. I don't know if you mentioned that, Ace. Mm. And obviously students' tracks can be played on there as well. So, and that um, goes out to the whole of Surrey, I believe. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Any other questions around the room? Fantastic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask one, if that's all right. Um, I'm quite interested in how uh, it is that you deal with... Um, we talked about how not everyone can be Ed Sheeran. And mm. um, so how does Industry Link then... We, we talked about you know, the portfolio and, and, and that, but I, 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 you've got sort of a programme um, for helping students deal with sort of that disappointment. Because that's also part of employability, that professional development, is, is that you're getting those knockbacks mm. in the industry. So there's a kind of, there's a real curriculum focus side and the dipping the toe in things. Yeah. But then how do you kind of build their esteem? Well, we, I mean, Victoria can tell you a bit more about this. We've got an amazing wellbeing program at ACM. A lot of things, you know, mindfulness was a word that no one really knew anything about a few years ago. So we've got a whole team. We've got student services team. We've got an amazing guy called Lee Fellows. And... Um, People can book in for these, um, you know, one-to-one uh, -one sessions. They can talk to these people. So we know that music business is hard. But that's, you know, that's given. But, but it's not impossible. Nothing is impossible. So when people are having a hard time, they can come to these well-being things. And it's a really big part. We invest a lot of money into that as well. But also, I think that, you know, it said everybody has a focus and, and we help to steer them into the best focus for them as, as well you know so if they say I really 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 want to do this we well there is a way of doing this you may be um, go, you know finding it hard this way but let's look at this way of doing it so there's I think the the dual professional tutors and and the kind of people we've got around us are very used to kind of saying well hey hang on let's let's not worry about this let's look at a different way of approaching this for our portfolio careers and our sustainability over a long period of time no I'd, I'd second that in the sense that um you know, we have mindfulness within the program, and in particular, we have um, again through technology my ACM help button. So, if you know if a student is um, suffering from performance anxiety, um, then they can press that button and they can be um, seen by somebody in student services within 24 hours. So, um, again, you know, it's that immediacy of, of supporting our students. Excellent, perfect. One last call for oh, we've got another one. We've got Roxanne there. Um, that was great. Really found it really interesting and sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> as well for the students. Um, I was just wondering um, operationally on things like the festivals, the, the one that you take them to um, and also when they go up to other cities or whatever. Um, I mean, do you have to do, I hate to ask this, but do you have to do risk assessments? Is it included in the fees? Do they pay extra on top? Well, Does any of that stuff become a problem? 
Well, not really, because it's, I suppose the way I look at it, I mean, you could probably tell me more about this, but it's, it's like an extracurricular activity in the real world of music business. So they could have gone for that audition in the festival, anybody. Those auditions, or all those slots, should say, are open to everyone, not just ACM. We happen to pick up on them, but any other musician, any other band could get those slots. So if they're going to go up to a festival and they've got a slot on, say, you know, Boomtown or something like that, that's a slot that is properly a valid slot on the festival. Anyone could take that. So that's where, I suppose, the line is it becomes extracurricular. They, they go out and they experience it on their own in that sense. If we're putting something together in a controlled environment, we will have tutors, staff around them, and we'll put more investment into that controlled environment. If it's a metropolis day, an experience day, uh, summer live, things like that, we will hold those events within our kind of um, bases, should I say. And I think that's where that would come in. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if Victoria could tell you more on that, but that would be from my angle. No, just I mean, in the sense that obviously industry this is embedded within the brand and students don't pay on um, top for that. So um, it's very much part of our model and, you know, it's you know, increasing employability in the curriculum is, is what we do. Okay, excellent. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.